Theresa May has had an absolute shocker of a campaign. <laughs> She's tried to do the usual thing the Tories do, attack the opposition, and worst of all, on those policies, within a, you know days of publishing them, she's then changed her mind on numerous occasions. We've published every policy, we've published our cost, and we've published a funding source. And I said to the Tories, why haven't you done that? Because in their manifesto, the only figures are the page numbers. Theresa May and the Conservatives have been exposed for what they are, liars first of all. Incompetent, just completely incompetent, not just of running an election campaign, but incompetent in running a government. She's cut policing numbers, 20,000 police officers. Those police officers that stood up at the Police Federation Conference and said you are putting national security at risk as a result of these cuts. She didn't just ignore them, she condemned them for what? She said, crying wolf. The mainstream media have not been the kindest to us, to say the least. They've hounded Jeremy and myself and our colleagues, they've hounded our families. My wife is from Goa. Her parents are in their mid-80s. The Mail on Sunday sent out to Goa this weekend. A journalist and a photographer, just to harass them. But we just cut through that. People no longer believe their lies anymore. And they are lies. They make up stories. They invent things and they just abuse people all the time. I think people have had enough of that sort of politics. They're just not listening to them anymore. And people actually have got an alternative source of information. Now they've got social media, so they can go on the internet. They can go on Twitter and Facebook, and they can find an alternative. We now have a form of media which is much more democratic and open and no longer controlled by the oligarchs. Fake news is about lies. It's about lies that the mainstream media have been telling about us. The worst lie They've been accusing Jeremy and myself of supporting terrorism. But all we've done throughout our lives is support peace and work for peace. And it's interesting, though, some of these Conservatives that have been attacking us, I can remember only a few years ago, they were supporting the apartheid regime in South Africa. Some of them were calling for Nelson Mandela to be hanged. The pundits and the commentators in the media have completely underestimated Jeremy Corbyn. He brings people together, empowers them, and that's what I call leadership. Only a few weeks ago, the opinion polls were telling us we were 25 points behind. And I said then, the polls will narrow if we can get our message out there. Both, yes, in terms of social media, but remember in Britain, the law is, during a general election campaign, the broadcast media have to give you at least some balance of cover. People can see Jeremy Corbyn in particular for what he is, an honest, decent, principled person. All through our election campaign and before it, We've had the whole of the elite establishment against us. The oligarchs who own the papers. The big businesses that are funding the Conservative Party against us. Why? Because we want to redistribute the power and wealth they have right the way across the population. And when we get elected, of course, they'll do everything they can to hinder the implementation of our policies. But the difference is this. We're the many, they're the few. We have one thing that they haven't got solidarity across the mass of the people and that's that solidarity that coming together under Jeremy Corbyn's leadership that will not only see us into government through this election but see that government through to success on behalf of the whole country the whole community